so I got caught red-handed painting. Uh, this cop put fucking handcuffs on me. But he did it so carelessly that, like, they weren't clicked all the way. So I pulled my hand through one of the cuffs and just fucking ran. But the other cuff was, like, really tight on my wrist. So I made it away from him. I couldn't get back to where I was staying. And then, like, you know, I had a falling out with the person who I was staying with. So I was stuck on the streets. So this whole time, like, for weeks and weeks, I had this handcuff around my fucking wrist. Couldn't get it off. I kept thinking, like, how the fuck am I going to get this thing off? So basically, I finally scrounged up enough money. I was stuffing, like, tissue in my fucking, uh, like, sleeve in between the handcuff and the fucking skin so that it wouldn't, like, drape down. And I would basically just be walking around with this handcuff for, like, probably three weeks. Maybe a little more. And I was asking other homeless people, and, you know, they're like... You're, you need bolt cutters or you need a key. Like somehow you're, we're not going to be able to get that off. So I had it on me. Finally, I get on a, a fucking bus. I start going south and we're in like, I want to say it was like Reno, Nevada, where this dude got on. He just got out of prison. African-American guy sat next to me. I could tell he just got out of prison. He had like all his, you know, he had like CDC shit. California Department of Correction shit. So uh, I started talking to him. He was super fucking cool. And then I was like a little sketched out because I'm like, I was just paranoid. Like from having to run and being homeless, like I was very rattled by it. So I was like, I want to trust this guy right now. So I'm just going to run it by him. I show him the fucking handcuff and he's, he's cracking up. He's like, why do you still have that on your hand or your wrist? And I'm like, I can't get it off. So he looks through his shit and he finds like a little, it's an actual like prison issue bottle of lotion, little bottle of lotion, which I'm a little skeeved out by. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And he's like, watch, just watch. So he turned the buckle of the cuff to like where the inside of my hand was. And he just lotioned the shit out of my hand. He's like, here, just rub all this like on here. So I fucking got it on there with very low expectations. And whoop. It really came off. But the catch was... He wanted to keep the handcuffs. He's like, can I keep these handcuffs? And I was like, absolutely. And I started thinking about it and I was like, oh, my fingerprints are probably like all over those handcuffs. Like, I don't know what he was in for. I didn't bother asking. He was super fucking cool. He was on his way home, but he wanted to keep the handcuffs. And I'm like, Ugh. yeah, just, just fucking keep them. And uh, he made it to like mid midway through. I think he went to like, maybe Bakersfield, California, he got off. And, uh, I mean, I couldn't fucking believe it. Like it was the most astounding thing to me that I had walked around for weeks with this fucking handcuff around my wrist. And all it took was to just meet this dude and he just whoop, right off. So it was, it was kind of restored my faith in humanity. It was, it was definitely like, like I said, the people of Portland were cool to me being homeless and then to like just meet this dude fresh out of prison who never met me a day in his life to just do that for me was like, fuck, dude, this is crazy. So what do you think you learned uh, throughout your time being homeless? I mean, I learned some other survival shit that I probably wouldn't have. Um, do you think that uh, basically the question I'm trying to get at is like, so right now in New York and also to be to be honest, like LA, Seattle, holy oh, shit. Oh, so bad. There's man. so many homeless people. There's so many and, and not only that, but something you pointed out earlier is like homeless people who clearly have a mental problem. You see in New York, uh just people getting straight up stabbed from behind for pretty much no reason. It's I've so seen crazy. so crazy. I've seen footage of like girl texting, someone comes from behind her, just mwah, drags her like a few arbitrary feet snuffs her out a few more times and then dips and then it's like my question is not that you ever got to that level like i don't know like to what extent you were homeless and like how your mind was doing but um like do you think that it's society's fault do you think it or do you think it more so lies within the individual somewhere in between like what do you think about that having experienced some type of homelessness i mean mental illness and like you know people I know in California, at least, like, the mentally ill, they don't necessarily go to, like, uh, 
what am I looking for? They don't go to an institution. They usually end up in jail. When they end up in jail, they don't have the resources to help them. So what they'll do is like whatever their crime was, they'll serve their time and then they'll bus them to another city. They'll be like, here, we don't want you in LA. We're going to send you here and it's somebody else's problem now. So as far as homelessness and mental illness goes, I feel like it's just a, a serious lack of America taking care of their people. Like these are American people. They need, you know, they have mental illness regardless. And maybe all it would take would be a little medication or something. And, you know, they would probably be like a, a member of society that's functioning. But as far as my experience, mine was just like a very shameful experience. Like I just, I was just ashamed the whole time. Like this is a shitty situation and whatever else. And, yeah, I was rattled by it because... What do you, what do you mean by shameful? Like, like shameful in I'm a homeless of... person. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I've been homeless, like, plenty of times, but I had places to go. You know what I mean? Like, if I really needed to, I could ask a friend to sleep on the couch. I had nothing. I was at zero in life. Like, I had... It was the lowest point of my life. So, for me, I didn't have friends. I didn't have... I had nothing like no one to rely on i had to rely on myself and my wit to try to get by try to save money and then you know thinking about when you do have money you want to go eat and whatever else but you have to save it you know what i mean and, and then what if you get robbed like the situation is, is that you kind of have to that's why i would stay up at night instead of sleep at night too is like if you're asleep and you got a pocket full of money you don't see if someone's coming to fucking rob you or whatever else so in the daytime you're a little safer. There's a little more going on, at least where I was. I kind of read the situation like that. Um, as far as, you know, mentally ill homeless people go, like, I feel like just like the situation I'm talking about where he's in the bathroom, he's spray painting himself. No sane person does that. Uh, people are just blind eye in it. They're just, oh, not my problem, not my problem. And, you know, where are social workers for this? Or like, how come... How come we don't, I think I've seen something in New York where they kind of come and check up on homeless people, but I mean, there's so many fucking homeless people. Like how can they keep tabs on everyone? So I don't know. I feel like it's fucked up. I feel like the, throughout the country, not just, you know, New York, LA, it's just a situation where it's, it's somebody else's problem. You know what I mean? And like America is not looking into it and saying like, this is something that we could take care of if we just stopped and found a place for these people, got them the help that they like. But then again, as far as people becoming psychiatrists or, you know, therapists and, and whatever else, like, I don't know that, you know, I know a lot of people who went to school for that, did it for a couple of years and were like, fuck this, I'm not doing this anymore. So the, on the other side of that, there's the people who have to deal with that and you know who wants that job you know that's kind of a it's a tough it's a tough thing to think about but this was a segment from bats interview the full episode is available on our patreon we have episodes from graffiti writers ola host 18 xsm sake less ykk cash Four, wayne cod and dual risk crew members also gain access to episodes of z and i speaking on a range of topics from mental health, martial arts, graffiti, and the world as a whole. Members can message us anything they wish to speak on or questions for upcoming episodes. Members can also opt to join our product tier where we send out products like silver mops, photo books, and signed prints to our members every month. Infinite thank you to everybody who shows an ounce of support. Link is in this episode's description.